Okay, everybody, let's, uh, let's all stand. Oh my gosh, 20 after? Let's stand. Some of you got caught in the traffic jam at the front door. So it took a little while to get on in, but uh, good to see you all today. Um, happy first day of June. Good way to start summer, right? <laughs> I hear you. Well, we're part of a record, a record-breaking day. Everybody, we're, this is a wonderful day of thanksgiving and praise. Uh, today we are going to be installing the new senior pastor for Calvary Chapel Maricopa. It's been a, uh, about a nine-month transition, and we are very grateful for God's faithfulness, not only in bringing us a pastor, but keeping our church together and uh, growing, even in the middle of the transition. So um, all of you that have been here through it, God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. Those of you that are new and, and just starting here, may God just use you and pour out his love upon you. Uh, might you just truly be blessed in getting closer to Jesus, because that's what we're about. So let's pray together, and we'll start the morning. Father God, in Jesus' name, we love you. We love you so much. We thank you for dying on the cross, Lord, and paying the price for all our sin, Lord, and making the way that we could know you and love you and walk with you and, and, be a, and make an impact, Lord, in our families, in our neighborhoods, where we work and go to school. Lord, you, you are doing a work here, right in this little place called Maricopa. Uh, Lord, we thank you. When Jesus said, uh, charged his disciples to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I wonder if he just had in his heart and mind, as God probably did, this little place in Maricopa. 20 centuries later, the gospel is still going forth. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning that we can be together in your word and worship and praise. Thank you for all the believers that are gathering around town and in the Valley of the Sun. Lord, we praise you this morning, and we ask that you would be glorified in all that is said and done. In your wonderful name, Jesus, amen. amen. So let's remain standing, and we'll open in worship, okay? We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Everyone sing. up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing everyone sing holy is the Lord His glory, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. His rose in the all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory oh. 
His glory. Lord Jesus, we are so incredibly thankful, God, that we can glorify your name. God, higher above than any other name, God. Thank you so much just for who you are and all that you do and all that you're doing for and in and for this church, God. We thank you, and it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and grab a seat, church. Good morning. Uh, so first of all, before we uh, get into anything, good morning. It's good to see you. But second, if you would please scoot in some. Uh, I know it's going to be a full house today. We're bringing in some extra chairs, but if you're near the corners and there's some empty seats, please just scoot in. Uh, we are going to need the space this morning. Yeah, the whole front row is free over there. Um, so if you're looking for a spot, there are still lots of spots available. Wow, this is an incredible, incredible day. Uh, we have been looking forward to this for quite a while now. Uh, we are officially installing Pastor Roger Thompson as our senior pastor, which is just an... I'm excited. I'm excited. The Lord is good. Amen? Amen. 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 So, just a few announcements with, uh, to share with you this morning. First of all, this coming Wednesday, you should have a little bulletin insert here. There is a night of worship here at the church at 7 o'clock. This is with uh, Deep Water Ministries, and they're actually really good friends with Pastor Roger, and so we would love to just have this entire place filled and just singing worship and praise to our God. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. Also, it is going to be Pastor Roger's birthday, so make sure you come by and uh, say happy birthday, birthday to him. And again, that's Wednesday, June the 8th. For our youth, we are doing our last summer event um, with Alicia and I as, our, as the youth leaders here. So it's going to be a little bittersweet, but at the end of this month, we are going up to Prescott with the kids. So if you want to go up, we're going to go to the Elevate Music Festival, which is this huge Christian music festival they do in Prescott. It's going to be an incredible time, not only of concert and worship, but of just fellowship and Bible study as well. Uh, the cost is $150 per student. There is a sign-up sheet over in the back corner, and uh, we would love, love to have you guys. Uh, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to talk to me after service for that. And I think that's really all the announcements we have for you. Uh, if you are a visitor this morning, we want to welcome you. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different than a typical service, but we are excited because the Lord is bringing us our new senior pastor. If you would, there's two things that we would ask of you as a visitor. Uh, in the seat pocket in front of you or around you, there's a white visitor card. And really, we'd love to, for you to fill that out, drop it off in our wooden agape box, really just so we can send you a letter and tell you a bit about the church. Now, this morning, you're probably going to learn a lot about the church, um, but we'd love to do that and just get in contact with you. We won't keep harassing you or anything like that or asking you for money. That's not what we do. Uh, but we would love it if you would just share a little bit about yourself. And uh, any prayer requests are always welcome as well. We have prayer uh, meetings throughout the week here, and uh, we would love to be praying for you. And again, that's on the white card in the seat pocket in front of you. With all of that being said, why don't you go ahead and stand up and say hi to someone around you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my 
my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are sealed, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone Who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless pain This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on the cross where Jesus died The wrath of God Was satisfied Till he in sin On him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by dawn Slain, then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Sin's curse has lost its grip on me For I am his and he is mine Bought with the precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever break me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever break me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand stars they wept the son of god was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him One final breath he gave As heaven looked away The Son of God was laid In darkness The battle in the grave The war on death was waged The power of hell forever broken The ground began to shake The stone was rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated Now forever He is glorified
ground began to shake The stone was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now death, where is your sheep? Our resurrected King has rendered you Thank you for the sacrifice that you made. God, thank you that you have overcome sin and death. And thank you, God. We are so incredibly thankful. God, as we just continue this morning and, and we, um, we celebrate the fact that Pastor Roger and Denise have come to be the under shepherds for us. God, as we celebrate this, and we, um, we pray them into office, essentially. God, we, um, we pray that you would just go before us. God, that you would encourage, that your spirit would be among us today. We would be your people and we would dwell with you. Not just today and not just this moment, but that going forth, that that would be our, the evidence of our lives toward this outside world, so that we love Jesus. God, and that he leads us and guides us. Lord, and we know that that's through, we show that through obedience and through love. So God, as we obey and, um, and have Pastor Roger take the throne. Oh, not the throne. That's not. No, no, no. Sorry. I got, I got a little carried away there. No, as he takes this, um, this shepherd position, <laughs> God, would you be on the throne? God, because that's where you belong. God, so thank you. We praise you. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So today is going to be a little different. Uh, so we have several people who will be up here to share this morning. Um, but we're going to be all over scripture. So if anyone needs a Bible, um, please just raise your hand. We'll get a Bible into your hands. If you have a Bible, make sure you do your finger workout so you can be ready uh, because we are going to be uh, moving pretty quick here. So I'm just going to read this morning Psalm 145, verses 8 through 13. The Lord is gracious and merciful. 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and your glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his works, excuse me, in all his words, and kind in all his works. Church, we are excited because we know that the Lord is bringing us something good in Pastor Roger. We know that he, the Lord Jesus, is going to be leading this church, but he is using Pastor Roger to do so. This really, this morning isn't about necessarily even Pastor Roger coming aboard, but it's about our trust in God that he knows what is right for you and for this church because God loves you and he loves this church. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, many of you probably have this memorized already, but it says this, give all your worries and cares to God. Cast all your anxieties upon him. Why? Why? Because he cares about you. God cares about you. And we know that God gives us the prophets, the apostles, and the pastors and teachers. And we have a great pastor and teacher who will help with that care. He is going to shepherd us as we go forward into the next chapter of this church. So church, as we look back on the history of this church as we look forward to the next chapter be ready and be excited because what god is doing is to equip you okay this is to equip you to do the work of the ministry the ministry is not here the ministry is out there and so pastor roger is going to help equip you to do that so we're going to welcome pastor phil evans here as he comes up and shares um we're excited. We're excited. Pastor Pat and Pastor Phil have really just been um, helping with this transition just so incredibly much, and so we are very thankful to have Pastor Phil here. Thank you, Michael. Oh, the Lord is good. Amen. The Lord is really good. Pastor Pat asked if I would share from Ephesians chapter 4, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Just talking about the unity that we have in Christ and, and what he has in store for us. The Lord's doing a great work. And so basically this morning, I'm going to be talking to Pastor Roger, but you guys can eavesdrop if you want. <laughs> or you can play with your iPhones or you know, whatever. But, but here's what we need to know. Before we get into chapter 4, there's Ephesians chapters 1 and 2 and 3. And those chapters encourage us to begin this pilgrimage that we have with Jesus from a sitting position. In fact, he tells us to just sit and bask and enjoy what he has given to us as believers. In chapter 1, he told us that we we're chosen, we we're made holy, it already took place. Jesus did it. We've been predestined to be with him. We've been adopted into his family. We have redemption. We're forgiven. We've been given insight into the things of God. We're co-inheritors with Jesus Christ, he said. This is amazing stuff. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. We're saved by grace. We were made one in Christ. And he goes on to say, Jesus is our peace, who has broken down every wall. Wow. And he wants us to just, first of all, sit and enjoy that, to just relax. And then he closes chapter 3 just with a, a beautiful prayer. He's praying for the whole church, and he's praying that we might ascertain, that we might grab hold and understand what is the breadth and length and height and depth of his love. I like that. 
And then he closes off that prayer by saying, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen, he says. Now, Roger, a lot of pastors don't like this idea that people would come to church and just sit and relax and bask in all these riches that we have. In fact, a lot of pastors would say, no way. I mean, you got to get people plugged in. They walk in that door, you better get them in the ministry. You know, make them hand out bullets, make them teach Sunday school, do something so that they have to come back next week. Because if you don't lose them, you're going to, you don't use them, you're going to lose them. Well, the neat thing is, is they're not yours to lose. <laughs> they belong to Jesus. And he already promised that he's not going to lose a single one. So you don't need to worry about that. Kind of takes some pressure off of you. You're not going to lose them. They belong to Jesus. So he tells us to just relax. And you need to understand that some people that are coming into Calvary Chapel Maricopa as the first time and second time and third time, they might be desperately in need of just resting. Maybe they've been burned by some other church or Christians, family. Maybe they've been burned out. And they just need to sit and relax for a while. And you need to encourage that. Now, once they've sat for a while, <laughs> we come to chapter 4. And in chapter 4, he basically starts off by saying, get off your duff and walk. <laughs> that's kind of a paraphrase, but that's kind of what he's saying. He says, after you've sat and basked and relaxed and enjoyed what the Lord has for us, it's time to get up and start walking. And so that's what we're going to take a look at here in chapter 4. Paul says this, I beseech you, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. He just got through telling us all these wonderful things that we have. We've been adopted into the family of God. We're kids of the king. He says, walk worthy of that calling. Now you might think, whoa, LeBron James, you know. I can walk worthy. Well, it's not that kind of walk he's asking us to do. All puffed up. We, we have a right kind of to be puffed up when you look at all this stuff that we have. But he says, no, 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 no. It's not you. It's Jesus. It's all about him. We've been sealed with the Spirit. That's true. But to walk worthy of the calling... Roger, for us, especially as pastors and for those that are leaders here in this church, we're never to have that kind of an attitude of superiority or, or being puffed up. Instead, we're supposed to walk like this, it says in verse 2, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace. Paul is beseeching us. You know, that means he's encouraging us. He's drawing us near and he's saying, now listen to this. This is important stuff. Don't walk with your nose in the air, all snooty. <laughs> Even though we have these incredible blessings, but walk with all lowliness. That means humility. We're called servants of God. You know, you never realize if you're really a servant but until you get treated like one. Then you start understanding what a servant is. A servant doesn't get you know, offended when someone asks him to do something. That's what he does. So walk with all lowliness and gentleness. 
Be gentle with these folks. With long suffering, which another word for patience. I've been a pastor for a lot of years. Patience. <laughs> patience. Bearing with one another in love. In other words, walk worthy of the calling with which you've been called. And the natural result of you and I walking like this, the natural result for us as a body walking like this, is that we're going to preserve the unity of the peace. That bond of peace, the unity of the Spirit that He created. Now notice, it doesn't say we need to create unity. You don't need to make unity in this body. This body's got unity. You don't need to make unity in the body of Christ in this Maricopa area. We already have that. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, Father, make them one, even as we are one. And you got to understand when Jesus prays something, it carries a little weight. So we already have unity. We just need to act like it. And so he's asking us to just keep that unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace that we have. Just walk like we already have it. He goes on in verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. In you all, that's how you know he's from Texas. But nonetheless, we are united at the cross. We're brought together by Jesus Christ, and our fellowship is found at the foot of the cross. And he asks that we would just act like the brothers and sisters in the Lord that we are. We've all been adopted into this family. We're supposed to treat one another like that. We're one. Yet we're one with diversity. And I love that. The body of Christ is made up of a, a whole group of people with all kinds of ages and backgrounds. And, and the Lord brings us together. And here at Calvary Chapel Maricopa, we have a great diversity, a wonderful grouping of people here. And the thing is, over the past several months, Pastor Pat and myself, we've fallen in love with these people. And now we're handing them over to you. So we want you to walk worthy of your calling. Walk in such a way that we can entrust these folks into your care. Because the Lord has entrusted them into your care. Now it's a beautiful thing when the body and the head all work together. And we have to understand that Jesus is the head. Pastor Roger's not the head, okay? But he's been asked to be a, a shepherd of this body. And together we need to function with the head and cooperate with what the Lord wants us to do as a body of Christ. I often like to think of the Olympic athletes when I think of a head and a body working together. I don't know. I don't know why I get fascinated by the speed skaters, but you know Anton Ono or whatever his name was. And I, I just amazed when I watch these guys push off with all their strength, and you can see the muscles because they wear those skinny little thing, leotards or whatever, you know. And they're just, uh, you know, they're moving, and their head is just moving around the track. It doesn't even bob up and down or anything. Have you ever noticed that? Just amazing. They're body and their head is working together to accomplish the goal of winning the race. Same thing with the gymnasts. When they watch gymnastics, you know, they're going through the whole routine in their mind before they get up on the bars or the rings or whatever they're going to do. And you, you've seen that and they're kind of go through the whole thing so that when they get up there, their body and their head work together. That's a beautiful thing. When the body of Christ and the head, Jesus Christ, are working together. Because when there's a separation between the body and the head, you have something that's called spastic. You know, and you, the limbs will fly other directions, and it just doesn't function the way it's supposed to, and you don't get where you want to go. 
that separation causes a, a problem. I, I remember when we lived up in the Applegate Valley, um, Aunt Viva, who was in, on the next ranch up above us, she had to teach me how to kill chickens with a machete. And uh, it's kind of hard, the first few. Uh, but it's interesting because once that head is separated from the body, there's still a lot of activity. That chicken goes running all over the place, but there's not much fruit. See, we need to be functioning together, and then you can get some fruit out of the ministry. God wants us to function as a body with all parts working together. So, Roger, you're not the head. Jesus is the head. He's the vine. We're the branches. And your job is to just cling on to the vine. You stay close to the Lord. You draw close to Him. He'll draw close to you. And as these precious folks watch you walk that way, they'll follow. And they'll be close to the head. They'll be connected. They'll be tied into the, the vine. So, I beseech you, Roger, walk worthy of the calling with which you've been called with all lowliness and gentleness, with patience and long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. God bless you. Well, hello, Calvary Chapel Maricopa. Uh, my name is Tim Millsaps, and I have the privilege of having been Roger's friend for many years, and he considers me his pastor, which I consider to be a very humbling and uh, honoring position to hold in his life. So I wanted to tell you, because I've only got a minute, I wanted to tell you four things about Pastor Roger. First off is he has a fierce and undying love for his family. Uh, like all of us, as we've raised our kids, we, they end up ultimately making their choices, some good, some bad. But I've watched this man and his dear wife continue to point his awesome children toward the Lord in all circumstances of life. And hence, he fits the qualifications, or one of the many qualifications of an elder, because as he loves his family, so goes his love for the church. And he's going to treat you as his church family in much the same way he's treated his family. Which takes me to my second point. Roger has a fierce love for people. He is going to love you with the truth. And he's going to love you with grace. You're being served by a man who understands a road to redemption. And he also understands the reality of a call upon his life to turn around into the waters and the storms and the high waves that people live in and reach down in, grab another hand and pull him up to heaven. You're going to find him to be a great, great example. Now, Roger's third love, I actually have to warn you about. If you have any kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, accountability group or anything of that nature, please promise me that you will put him in the middle of that and surround him with accountability partners because Roger has a terrible love for motorcycles. <laughs> Not that it's kind of like, you know, broccoli you might love broccoli, but broccoli may not love him. Well, motorcycles are kind of the same way. So if you notice any motorcycle magazines or or motorcycle things on his computer, please have that shut down. Do not let that man ride or look at or be near a motorcycle. <laughs> my final thing is my dear friend has an admirable and an amazing love for Jesus. You're going to notice that he's probably going to be one of the friendliest people in the church. He's very disarming. He loves the word. He loves truth. But he loves the Lord. And as a follower of Jesus, there's something that I and others have seen in Roger that I know you're going to see and many of you will respond to. And that's, I, we believe, I as his pastor and those others who have mentored him believe that we have really found someone that fits the Second Timothy 2.2 principle. That as we have found faithful men, as it says there, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Pastor Roger Thompson has proven himself to be a faithful man. That's who you're getting as a senior pastor. 
You're going to love him as a friend. He's going to be a great role model. My, my request of you is that you would pray for he and his family and understand the weight of what goes with the role of senior pastor and that you would serve his vision as he seeks with his best ability to serve the God he loves so much. Pastor Roger and Denise, I love you guys. I'm so blessed for the opportunity uh, for this wonderful church family there in Maricopa to come alongside you and find people that need to know Jesus. So that's what I have to share, you, share with you. And I just hope that you're blessed. You enjoy your journey. And maybe I'll get a chance to come out and uh, meet some of the, the awesome people Pastor Rogers already told me about. God bless you, Calvary Chapel Maricopa. And I know this, if I do come there to visit, I ain't speeding because I've heard about your Sheriff Joe dog on it and I ain't wearing no pink jumpsuit over a speeding ticket. <laughs> God bless you guys. Hopefully we'll meet someday. If not here or there, as Mike Warnke used to say, I'll see you in the air. God bless you. Good morning, Calvary Chapel Maricopa. And welcome, Pastor Roger and Denise. I can't tell you how excited I am to hear that you've decided to take that work on in Maricopa. We want you to know, my wife Debbie and I, that we're here for you anytime you need us. And we also know that you're surrounded with brothers and sisters who love Jesus and will support the vision that God places in your heart. If you ever need anything at all, don't hesitate to call us. Be blessed. We'll continue to pray for you. And we look forward to what it is that God is going to do in and through you guys. God bless you guys. Hi everyone, it's Pastor Chris and Debbie, and we are so excited to be part of the induction of Pastor Roger and Denise Thompson as the pastor of Calvary Chapel in Maricopa, obviously a place near and dear to our hearts. And so, Roger, I just want to share a little bit. I know Debbie has some words for Denise as well, but my words start off from the Word, and I have a couple of verses here on this paper that I want to read to you. The first is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-5, through 5, and it says this, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And I find it interesting in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, Paul writing there says, And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. In both places, Paul is talking about fulfilling a ministry. And I believe with all my heart, Roger, that God has called you to fulfill the ministry as a senior pastor for Calvary Chapel in Maricopa. So excited to have talked with you on the phone, shared a little bit about the history of the church. But Archippus, the person that he's writing to, his name means Master of the Horses. And I don't think it's any coincidence that in Maricopa, if you go on outside to Wild Horse Pass, you see these herds of wild horses. You need to be the master of the horses there in Maricopa. Advance the kingdom, take hold, and fulfill the ministry that God has given to you. And Denise, we are so excited. Um, I just really believe that you guys are a perfect fit for this church. Um, as we all know, Jesus owns the sheep, but he also needs an under-shepherd. And so you coming alongside your husband and being his support is going to be your first ministry. And so, and with your family moving there and your grandbabies, mm -hmm. um, that's going to be awesome. I just know that the fellowship has already welcomed you and you're going to continue to grow in love and um, that closeness over the next years. And so we're really excited to see what's going to happen. Um, we're excited that when we come back for a visit next year, that we'll oh, be yeah. able to not only see some of the people we know, but be introduced to some of the, the new families that have just started coming. So we're really excited and cannot wait to see what the Lord has planned for Calvary Chapel Maricopa. And because this is kind of a transition, I, we thought it would be uh, appropriate to uh, take this. So I'm going to hopefully do this right. I should probably ask 
Maddie, who's helping us to film this, to do this. All right, so here we go. I'm putting these in here, and I'm taking the baton, and I'm handing it to you, Roger. This is the church that the Lord Jesus Christ, he owns it, it's his, but we as under shepherds, we are called to fulfill our ministry. So here you go, boom, throwing it to you virtually, <laughs> but I think Pastor Clark has something for you that he's going to hand to you. Always remember how much we care about you guys, how much we love you, and we can't wait to see you again. God bless you, Roger, Denise, and love everyone at Calvary Chapel Maricopa. We'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning, y'all. How you doing? Wow, it's a packed house. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, beginning in verse 12, the Apostle Paul gives a message to the the church there, and it, it follows a long instruction about uh, how to uh, face and live the the end times out. But uh, he ends up the book and 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 chapter five with a, an encouragement to uh, the church at large. And so this message is to a congregation as much as it's to its pastors and elders. And uh, Pastor Roger obviously is going to be our new. Uh, senior pastor appointed to lead us in these ways, and, and we're called to follow. So uh, listen along, and, and I know this is for Roger, it's for me, it's for you, it's for, it's for the whole body here. In verse 12, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish or exhort you, encourage you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. This word admonish or exhort in some translations, it means to tell somebody what they should do but without sharpness or a critical spirit. It's not a rebuke or a condemnation, but neither is it merely a suggestion or just advice. It's urgent and serious, but associated with comfort always. And it's a labor of love. Verse 14, And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle. Uh, in some of your translations, it says the unruly. Uh, we have some unruly among us sometimes, I guess. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with them all. This was a message to the whole church, not just the pastors and elders. Admonish the unruly. Set them straight if they need it. Encourage or literally give courage to those who are small of soul or mind, the feeble-minded. Have compassion on them. Comfort the weak. Patience with all. Because love is patient, among other things. Verse 15 See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seeks to do good to one another and to everyone. If we fail to do good to one another, then we fail to obey the command of Jesus to love one another. If the world never sees this church love one another, then the world's never going to let us love them too. And there goes the Great Commission. This is very practical advice from the Apostle Paul, but with eternal consequence. Verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It does not say give thanks for everything, but rather to give thanks in everything, because not everything is worth being <laughs> thanky about. <laughs> Made a word up there. This is one of the many reasons that God invented the church. So that there would be a family capable of bearing one another's burdens in his love. We're thankful how he carries us in that way. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. What in the world is that talking about? Uh, for some folks, they think that means they can do whatever they want in church, run up and down the aisles and bark like a madman. That's not what it's talking about. What it, in context here, it's talking about not failing to love. Because if there's no love, there's no fruit of the Spirit. That's what the fruit of the Spirit is, love. And it has a lot of qualities that we can read about in Galatians there. Uh, and so if we fail to love, we quench the Spirit. Hence all of these exhortations in Thessalonians, among other places. No love means no, a quenched Spirit. Verse 20, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God sanctifying our whole spirit, soul, and body. Why? Well, we're temples of the living God. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the living God? The temple's got three parts, and so do we. We put to death uh, our flesh in the outer court so that our mind can uh, prepare in the holy place where we, we, we pray and commune with God so that we can go into the most holy place and commune directly with the Spirit of God. That's our privilege. And there's no, it's not a coincidence that there was all this temple stuff uh, preceding Christ and that we would have this model to understand. It's a purposeful and diligent sequence of events. It's a way of life that makes godly love a reality, makes it possible. And there's really no other way. Verse 24, he who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. And so as a body, we need to be lifting up uh, our pastor in prayer. And Pastor Roger, I know that you wholeheartedly agree with what the Apostle Paul is encouraging the church to do here and to be in this passage. No church is perfect, but Calvary Maricopa has developed a legacy of love in its time here. Uh, we've had plenty of trials and tribulations, successes and failures, but always with a mind to love one another and to love this community. And though it was surely a team effort empowered by the Holy Spirit, Pastor Chris Ward, our founding pastor, was a huge part of setting that tone, and we're thankful for that leadership. And uh, this church has grown up strong because of that leadership. And uh, we're sad to see him go, but we're also glad uh, to see what he's going to do in the kingdom of God. We rejoice in his calling at the same time. Uh, but we're pleased that you are here to take up this mantle, and we're pleased that you are here, Denise, alongside of that. You bring uh, an, another awesome dimension to that game, so to speak. And uh, this body is ready, willing, and eager to follow y'all, right? And uh, we're excited to be part of the calling that God got on your life. So welcome home, brother. Looks like I got this y'all thing going. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Pat Kenny, and I serve with Poyman Ministries, a Calvary Chapel ministry that helps churches that are going through transition. Um, we also like to come alongside just individual pastors and be encouragement to them. And uh, you know, our our Calvary Chapel movement is uh, well into its middle ages. Uh, as a movement, when when do we start? When to start? Phil, about the mid '60s, and uh, here we are in 2016. And would you agree with me that the Lord is still here and the Lord is still at work? And I remember a song a long time ago. One of the one of the chorus lines was, uh, uh, you know, it was a song, "Come quickly, Jesus." You know, and and we want Jesus to come. Uh, we won't. We we look forward to the glory of what heaven's going to be by the Creator who made the whole universe. I don't think I'm going to be sitting up there just blink, blink, you know, plucking a harp, blink, <laughs> for like eternity. I I don't. That that's not the picture of heaven that we have. If you know Jesus, you know the Creator of everything. And I'm so blessed, so blessed at watch uh, watching what God has done. Um, and over these last five decades, I had the privilege of pastoring Calvary Chapel Escondido in North San Diego County, 27 years, and then serving in serving missionaries for the next eight, and then getting the call, as I've been serving with Poyman, to come out here to, to Maricopa. And I came out in October, and I thought, eh, we'll have this wrapped up by Christmas. <laughs> no problem. But God had another thing in mind. You know, it's so important uh, in a race, as Chris was talking a little bit, about the handoff. You know, churches go through transitions. You know, life changes. People move on. Ministry calls. Sometimes there's other things that get in the way. But in the case of Calvary Maricopa, it was Pastor Chris responding to the call of God 
to go to a place that's very different. Now, you might not think England is very different, but if any of you have been to England or Ireland or Scotland, you know they speak somewhat what we can understand, but their culture is very, very different. And so they're, they're in a whole new culture, and they're learning and growing and seeking to make God's word known to many. And we, we're a part of that, and I'm so grateful for that. To have gotten to know Chris. I mean, I knew I met Chris off and on over the years, and uh, knew he was somewhere in Arizona. That's all I knew. Until I got to drive five and a half hours out here from San Diego, and go, ah, so this is Maricopa. And there was that that great smell in the air, you know, <laughs> that we've all come to know and love. It's a kind of smell like we're home, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I digress a bit. <laughs> but it's just a wonderful history. I want you to know that. That what's happening today is just a, a, it's another sweet step that God has for us. And you know when you got saved. I mean, I, I, how many of you can remember that? You know, uh, I, I heard somebody teaching last week that one of the things before we get up to teach or before we share or before we even start the day, we remember what God's brought us from that he rescued us, that, that he forgave us, that, that he, re, he showed us how much he loved us. He brought us into fellowship. Now, you know, anytime you get around people, even Christian people, it can sometimes get messy, right? I mean, we've all been through it. Christians don't always treat Christians in a Christian way, which I'll never get, but I know it happens. But the Lord continually exhorts us and brings us back, as Clark was saying, to that loving one another, and letting the world know that we belong to Jesus because we love one another. And so th this church has, has only been around 11 years. We just celebrated the 11th birthday a couple weeks ago. But until the Lord comes back, we've got to assume that there's still a few more to be saved. You know, he didn't save us just sit here and go wait for the rapture. No, he said, go. Go into the world. You know, preach, teach, love, baptize. Keep this going until I say it's up. And some of you have been at places in your life where you thought, it's up, it's done. Jesus, come now, <laughs> right? And the Lord in his mercy saw what was going to be beyond that moment and that the Lord had more that he wanted to do. When, as you get to know Pastor Roger and Denise and you get to know their story, You'll, you'll begin to learn that, uh, you know, Roger was saved out of darkness. And he has his story. And, and he'll share that with you as time goes on. But the Lord's not done yet. He came to a few spots in his life where he, what is this about? And the Lord said, Wait. There's still a few more souls to be saved. So with the, when the appointment ministries got involved here in October, we, we put the word out to the senior pastors around the country, and, uh, and we got about 15 responses. Kind of got that down to 12, and then whittled that down to six, and then started doing an interview process with those six couples. The Lord led us to three. And many of you had a chance to meet those three couples that came here back in the end of February and the first part of March. And right before Easter, our board got together, sought the Lord, and we went around a room, and Pastor Roger and Denise were the ones that we wanted to call. And it was unanimous. And I thought, I was just sitting there going, because I didn't tell them who I liked. And, and I just, because I wanted to see what God was going to do. I wanted there, there to be a witness, you know? You know, we, being of one accord in a situation as important, you know, as, as a pastor coming into the church. And uh, so we went around to the five guys and our, our five uh, uh, elder board members. Not, not that they're all elder. I don't mean like elderly as such. Well, there, there are a few old guys on the board. <laughs> I wasn't looking at you on purposefully. You were just, you were just there. But, but, you know, God's been so good to us. And so it came, came around the room, came to me, and I, I said, well, okay, okay let's vote. <laughs> you know, it, 
it was unanimous. Uh, and I loved it. I kind of just gasped in a bit. You know, that the Holy Spirit was really doing something. And, and I've got to commend all of you as well. Because in this process, you guys that were here under Chris, you didn't bail. I remember in the early part of November, I, we had a servant leaders meeting. Um, and it was uh, just a sweet time of the couples that are working in all the different ministries around the church. And there were about 24, 25 people gathered in this home. You know, and, and, and I'm looking around that room and I'm going, this is the leadership team. This church has a leadership team. They got 125, 150 people and they have a 25 people on a leadership team. It's unheard of. And as I got to, I, and it wasn't just, they didn't all just show up just because I was there. They loved each other. And I've seen that grow. Are we perfect? Do we not have any problems? No. But there's a love there that conquers it. And if we walk in love, we will get through those things. And so the church has held together. And when, we, when, when Chris left, there were a lot of tears. I was here on his last Sunday. It was very moving. And you could see the, the hearts. You know, when you love somebody and they're gone, what does your heart start to do? I mean, you get that ache and then you start to leak a little bit. And, uh, and, and it's genuine because you've had relationships that the Lord has built over the years. Can't help that. But then off he went. And I showed up. And God in his mercy knit my heart to you guys as well. And we continued to stay together. We stayed in the word. We prayed with one another. We helped one another. We laughed with one another. You know, it's what a family does. We make fun of one another sometimes. You know, I mean, that's it's cool. I think it's important. And we grew. Some of you folks are, have just started coming to the church in the last few months. Some of you, today's your first time. God bless you. <laughs> We're glad to get to meet you. And God is doing his work. He's not done with Maricopa. I mean, and I'm not saying we're the unique and the only church in Maricopa. There's a lot of churches in Maricopa. There's some good churches in Maricopa. Love Jesus. Teach the word. And, and we're part of that. We have our own little niche. And we thank, we thank God for our niche. But we recognize that we're a part of a larger work that God is doing. Amen? You know, and Roger has a passion to get to know some of the other pastors around town which I think is important. You know, that there's a lot of love flowing out. And, and God's going to be glorified in that. So it's been a steady process up to this point. And now it's time, it's time for the handover. And I am so excited. You know, not, not excited about not making the drive out here. And you know, I've, I've developed a love for the desert. I almost named some of the cactuses as I was, you know, going back and forth. It, I mean, it's pretty. It is beautiful it, it, when it's not 115, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm very grateful uh, to have just a little piece of that process of the transition of this church. Um, and this church didn't stop. And it's not stopping now. Still going. So Hebrews 12 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let's lay aside every weight, the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I mean, can you imagine that? The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, doing the Father's will, redeeming mankind, nailed to a cross, an act of pure love and joy for the people that would come to know and walk with the Lord at Calvary Maricopa. He's a great God. And, and we get to love him and serve him and and build up the people that are, are leading us. 
And so Roger and Denise have came, come out from Huntsville area, Hunts, Huntsville, Madison actually, Madison, Alabama, and are now part of Maricopa, Arizona, and even more importantly, part of Calvary Chapel. And, and we're grateful for that. So uh, there, there's many scriptures that have already been shared. Um, I, I just have a summary uh, of some thoughts uh, as we do the handoff this morning. We're told to go, to run the race. And while we're running the race, we're to stay focused on Jesus. We're told in Acts that we're to go. Actually, Matthew 28 says, go into all the world. And Acts 1.8 talks about us going in all the world with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's got to be so God, right? It's got to be God leading us. And he leads us while we stay focused on Jesus. And as the Holy Spirit works in us, we dare to reach outside the box. To the early apostles, he said, you know, you're going to be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, most, a lot of us don't know what Jerusalem, well, some of us know what Jerusalem is. It's on the news a lot. Judea, the area around Jerusalem. Samaria, the area that the people in Jerusalem didn't want to go near. Kind of the untouchables. Pseudo, pseudo Jews, they thought they were. Not real ones. And then he says to the other most parts, would have been the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, places where a good, strict Jew would have a real difficulty. And they, and, and they went. And they went not because they liked it and because it was comfortable, but because the Holy Spirit led them and the gospel spread. And Paul the Apostle went out and preached and eventually ended up in Europe where a lot of our roots are and south in Africa and in Asia, you know, the word of God spread. And we're here part of that now. And I'm sure if you were in Jerusalem and you were one of the disciples and the Lord said, you know, the gospel is going to go to Maricopa. <laughs> they go, okay. Because they wouldn't have any clue what that was. And many of us sitting in this room had no clue this is where we were going to be. <laughs> Amen? At one time? Maricopa? But now it's become home. And God's doing a work here. And there's 40, 50,000 people in Maricopa. And I know they all don't go to church. I know they all don't know Jesus. But you guys do. And you're a light. So get close to Jesus. Get to know Pastor Roger and his wife. Lift them up. Pray for them every day as they run the race. And you run with them. So run the race, stay focused on Jesus, go everywhere and in the power of the Holy Spirit, dare to reach outside the box. In Timothy, we're told to fight the good fight with faith, with, with a good conscience. And we have a good conscience because what we're doing is good. And have a life filled with prayer. Be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. And have a godly walk. Those are the exhortations we have in First and Second Timothy. Study the word and proclaim Jesus and love his church. And that's, that's my word for you. God's word for you. And he just lets me, lets me say it. And I'm grateful for that. So it's been a blast getting to know all of you. And I'm looking forward to how God is going to continue to build our relationship and friendships as we go on from here. Because even though I might not be coming out to Maricopa every, every week or every other week, my heart's still with you guys. And I know I'm going to be here. If the Lord should tarry and the creek don't rise, you know, I'm going to be here again. Because you guys are we're, we're part, part of the family. I want to thank God for my own home church, Calvary Chapel Santee. Pastor Gary Lawton there sends his greetings this morning and Asks that God would just bless you guys. My wife sends her greetings as well. And we're just so grateful to have gotten to know some of you. So at this time, I would like to have Pastor Roger and his lovely wife, Denise, come on up.
And let's welcome Roger and Denise. I did see a motorcycle magazine in your house. I see a lot of motorcycle stuff. <laughs> I walk into the room, he's got his study and he's got his racing leathers hanging on the wall. And I'm, this poor man. <laughs> and then Tim had to give it to you. Yeah. But that's Tim. So let's have the elders of the church, the pastors, come on up, the leaders in the church. Juan, get up here. Tim, your wives, come on up. Hey, watch your step. Watch that first step. Okay, let's step up a little bit further, okay? Yeah. Right. Let's snuggle up, okay? <laughs> snuggle up. Where'd that come from? There's a crew behind me here. <laughs> and so together, we'd ask you to join us in prayer. And as our leadership team prays for, for these beautiful folks, would you pray along with us? as we commend them to the work that God's called them to do. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the faithfulness you've shown to Calvary Maricopa over its entire history here and uh, in bringing us uh, excellent shepherds in Pastor Chris and starting the work and now uh, Pastor Roger continuing it and his wife Denise. And we just ask your blessing on them and on us as we follow. And so uh, we lift it up to you, God, and we look forward to the fantastic things that we know you have in mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we, we are just so thankful that you have brought us, uh, Pastor Roger and Denise. Lord, I ask that you would just fill them to overflowing with your Holy Spirit, that they would be empowered and strengthened to do your work here that they would know your wisdom, that they would know your Holy Spirit, that you would lead them in the steps to build this church. Lord, we love you. This is a church that loves you. Lord, and your son, Roger, loves you. So please lead him as he leads this church, as you lead this church, God. Lord, we just ask for your grace now. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that you would just give Roger keen insights into your word, Lord. That he would understand what you want to say to Calvary Chapel Maricopa. On any given week, Lord, at any given session, Lord, that he would have your word for your people. Fill him with that, Lord. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to lift up Roger and his family. Thank you for them being here, Lord. I just ask you to bless them and keep them, Lord. Lead them. Take them where you want to go. Take them through those doors that you have open for him. Mm -hmm. Father, we just uh, lift up this body, mm -hmm. and we're going to totally support him, mm -hmm. Lord, and uh, lift him up always in our prayers, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, we do give you thanks. Lord, we thank you for Roger and... Just placing him here, um, Lord, just answering our prayers and just this whole process. Pray for him and his family. We pray for um, your spirit upon him, Lord, and just the leadership that um, and the position you've placed him in. Lord, we just pray for this church and this body. Uh, we thank you for each and every person here and uh, just the plans that you have uh, for us as a body and each of us individually. And we just ask... Uh, that you would just continue uh, to bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you have in this church. Uh, we've been blessed in different stages in this church. And in this new chapter, I just continue to ask you for the blessings because we love this church and you love your people. And we just want to keep being blessed and uh, in this new chapter, we can, I ask you for just keep blessing us because we want to continue in this path. And in uh, this new chapter, uh, I'm excited to see what's coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, 
ask you for continuous blessing, not to only the people that are here, but to the people that is going to be taking us to those uh, new chapters in, uh, in our life. Thank you for all your blessings that you're giving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, I just want to take this moment to thank you for all your blessings in our lives, Father. Thank you for for allowing Denise to come into our lives, Father. Give her the give her the wisdom, enlighten her, Lord, so that she can continue to help the women of this church, Lord, mm-hmm. in some way or the other. You know, help them to walk their the path that you've called us women to walk, Lord. Mm-hmm. Encourage her. Help her to be her husband's support, Lord, and to be the, the, the leader of this church, Father. Just give her the wisdom and the strength, Lord. We thank you for all you do in our lives, Father. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we are just so grateful, Lord, that you have brought this woman into our, our path, Lord, to serve you, um, to serve her husband, to serve her family, and then to serve her women of her church, as well as the other people in the church, Lord, that may call upon her for any needs that she will be willing to step up to do, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for her spirit. We thank her for her lovingness, and we thank her for her friendship that she's already bestowed upon so many of us, Lord. And we are excited to see what's going to happen, not only among the women of this church, Lord, but among the whole church as a whole. Thank you for the unity that you brought together in these two people, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. Father God, we thank you for our dear sister Denise, Lord God, and just the blessing that she is to our lives and what she will be in the future to all of us, Father. We just want to ask that you would just continue to mold her and shape her, Lord, into the woman that you desire for her to be, Lord God, in this journey and on this new path, Father, and the good things that you have begun in her, Lord, you are faithful to complete. And so, Father, we just thank you for Pastor Roger and for Denise, Lord, just as they stand side by side, serving you with a faithful heart, Lord God, and that they would just continue to walk in the calling that you have for them, Lord God, and that you would fill them with your spirit and just um, outpour, Lord, to this church and to this community. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I just thank you so much that, um, God, you have led these people to us. God, you have um, orchestrated this. Lord, and you knew from the beginning of their lives that they would end up here in Maricopa. We, this is no surprise to you. So thank you so much for that. Thank you that you know um, you know the beginning from the end, and, and you, you're in control. God, you're on the throne. Lord, I pray that you would just give um, both Roger and Denise a, a vision for this church. God, that you would give them a clear direction that you are have this church going in, God, and that you would not only give them that vision, but that you would give them the tools and the the resources to actually um, act upon it. God, we know that you are are faithful. We know that you um, provide. You're the great provider. Um, And we know that you're, um, when it comes to financial or whatever the need is, God, your pocketbook is not not scarce, Lord. You you have all the resources that we could possibly need, God. So we trust you um, with the future of Calvary Maricopa, and um, we trust that you know exactly what you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that he is is moving and working in each of our lives to um, for the common goal that you have for, for Calvary Maricopa. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Lord, we just want to take a minute and say thank you, Lord, for Denise and Roger. Lord, we, we thank you that the board uh, prayed and sought your face. And 
that in unity they unanimous, unanimously were able to come together and brought Roger and Denise here. And Lord, through your grace and love, you have brought us Denise. And Lord, right now, we want to thank you from a mother's heart for also bringing Carrie and Ty and the family. We have yes. a bonus of a whole extra family along with Roger True and that. Denise. Mm -hmm. But also, we want to thank you for Lauren, who is still in Alabama. But you've also taken Tom and Mary Rose Onquit to the same town, close to them, to take care of Roger and Denise's daughter. Mm -hmm. So that we have Roger and Denise here and their family taking care of us, and one of our elders is there taking care of their daughter. So Lord, we thank you for your provision when we're praying for us and praying for them. And you have it all so well handled that we are comforted and we are in your arms and our hearts are at peace. So we go forward, Lord, thanking you and praising you for your vision and your provision and that we can rest as we go forward. Thank you, Lord, for what you do so far ahead of us that we can know how much you love us and you bring these people who are so well prepared and so ready to love us in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, everybody. Would you all just stretch your hands out to this couple, okay? And to this leadership team, and to yourselves in a way, because you're part of it. <laughs> and let's commit Roger and Denise. Father, in the power and the wisdom of your Holy Spirit, yes, God. who promised to be our comforter and our encourager, who promised to be the one that would guide us and lead us into understanding your word and having the, giving us the boldness to proclaim you. Lord, by, not by our might, nor by our power, but by your spirit that you have sustained and held this fellowship. And so now, Lord, uh, together as a church family, we commend and commit Roger and Denise Thompson to the work of the ministry pastoring Calvary Chapel of Maricopa. May you bless them wonderfully. May you use them mightily. May the ministry that flows through them bring good fruit, lasting fruit, from the little ones in the nursery to the children in the, in the Sunday schools, to our junior hires and our high schoolers, to the young adults and young marrieds, uh, to the men and women uh, that are sustaining and blessing and bringing the wisdom that is needed. Yes. For our older saints, Lord, that are, have been through so many years of walking with you, Lord, all together, we give you glory, we give you thanks, and we just pray that you would mightily bless Roger and Denise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Even the weather service is good. The weather service, huh? All right. Okay, so before we dismiss, um, by the miracle of technology, somehow, some way, that baton that was thrown by Chris ended up in Clark's hands. So there it is. And, and the scripture verses are inside. Wonderful. So Clark, representing Calvary Chapel Maricopa, Pastor Chris Ward, handed off the baton for me for an instant in the chapter in the growth of the church. And now with great joy, brother, the handoff. All right. All right. Love you, brother. You're awesome. Praise the Lord. And, and some, some gifts. Well, it, it does say a little bit. It says uh, on the batons, inscribed here, and it says, Calvary Chapel Merico, Pastor Chris Ward from 2005 to 2015, Pastor Pat Kinney from 2015 to 16, and Pastor Roger Thompson from 2016 to eternity. It doesn't say eternity. <laughs> But it does say Hebrews 12.1, to run the race. Run so. The race. So, so what's in these bags, guys? It, uh, what, what do you got in that bag there? Oh, it, in this bag. This, this gift thing. Uh, it's a gift. Uh, uh, sports Clark. thing, uh, you know. We know Clark's personality, right? Should I even open it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
keep calm and let the sea <laughs> 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 And then, Pat, I got this shirt because I think it matches your heart, and it's a mouthful. Um, Pastor's Prayer. Dear Lord, in honor, it's an honor and responsibility to speak to your people. Be my teacher as I teach them. Soften my heart to the needs of your people. Fill me with your love as I lead them. Fill my prayers with your power of your spirit. Use my words to bring hope and encouragement, blessing and power in Jesus' name. Amen. Did that all get on this shirt? Was that all on this shirt? All that on this shirt. Uh, Amen. Well, God has answered the pastor's prayer, and he's, and he's answered it wonderfully. So I want to say thank you, too, before I step down and let you wrap us up, Roger. I just want to say thank you to all of the leaders in our church, all the people that have been so gracious to me. I mean, we could spend the next 15 minutes talking about each one and how good they've been, but I'm, I'm just so honored. And each of you that I've gotten to know and uh, talk with and pray with, sweet. Just really sweet. I'm very grateful uh, to be a part of of this church family. And I believe I will continue to be a part of this family. So, bless your brother. All right, where's this? Awesome. All right, now service will begin. Open your Bibles. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was just an introduction. That was the intro, huh? <laughs> Man, we, Denise and I are so blessed uh, to be here. And it's a, it's, it is a new chapter in our lives. And so uh, we're excited for the future. Um, in the book of Acts, Acts 2, uh, Acts 2.42 begins with the, you know, uh, the kind of the, 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 the scene, if you would, uh, what the early church was doing. It says that they were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, the breaking bread, fellowship, and in prayer. Four simple elements to the early church. You know, they, they didn't have a whole lot, you know, but, they, but what they had, they took and changed the world. You know, and it, it's important. So we're going to focus on those four elements, and, and we're going to love each other. And, and so, and so uh, y'all come back it's next Sunday, y'all. Yeah, got some Alabama slang I'll pull out every now and then. So, but uh, I'm a California boy. It's been in Alabama, so I'm totally confused. <laughs> totally cool, y'all, right? So anyway, um, hey, I just uh, want to just, uh, just um, finish this thing with a blessing that you guys would leave here and have a great day. Stay cool and have a great week. Come back and uh, throughout the week, just seek the Lord. Pray and uh, seek His face. And we will see you next week. God bless you. All right. Okay, that's everybody. Stand. And you know the routine. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you guys, Calvary Chapel Maricopa, and give you peace. Touch you and love you. And you know what? God's so good to us. And you don't have to wait till next Sunday. This Wednesday night, we've got a night of worship. So if, you're, if you so are able, let's join it and keep it going. And bring a friend. Talk to other people. Love this community. Please pray for it. And eat cake. That's right. We have a congratulations cake out in the lobby. Enjoy and stay hydrated. Bless you guys. All right.